I have painted Coral now from Zombieside Black Plague from the Wolfsburg expansion. I will show you how I've painted him, but first let me show you my painted miniature. So I was really looking forward to painting him for uh, two reasons. First, he was the last hero that I needed to paint from the Wolfsburg expansion. So I have all the heroes now from the uh, main core box expansion, uh, core box uh, painted and from the Wolfsburg expansion. And second, my massive darkness was coming soon and sooner. So uh, my video is already up about uh, unboxing it, but now I have all these heroes painted, I can automatically move on to a uh, massive darkness. Carl was really fun to paint. He is a pretty simple miniature. I mean, he doesn't have like lots of crazy things going on. Uh, he likes to fight wolves, so he has this nice wolf uh, on his back, which is really good for dry brushing. I have not done that in any of my tutorials. No, I've not done that. Also, he just has a lot of uh, brown cloaks and tones going on so you know you have to worry about of not painting him the same color of brown all over because that will be really boring I've done different things of uh, his darker cloak to his lighter cloak to just having different kind of shades of brown on him that really like light him up that really made him different from the other heroes uh, his miniature was uh, relatively easy to paint. I put a lot of work in both of the cloaks. Uh, I kept the darker cloak actually really dark and only highlighted like the most upper parts which really makes it like pop but still in a dark color. And then the inner cloak he is wearing I just did it in a different shade of brown uh, to just make it different from the other cloak and to give the character more feeling and also shaded that to give this much more lighter color. So overall, I'm really happy. And the rest, I kept it pretty simple. Some dry brushing on the, um, on the wolf, uh, some shading uh, on his robe and everything. But other than that, it was really fun and really easy to do. Let's paint. I primed the miniature in the color Standard Gray from Citadel. Before I primed the miniature, I washed it with warm water and dishwasher soap to make sure the primer stays on well. For the skin, I used the colors Pale Flash with Brown Sand from Vallejo. I will use a 50-50 mix of these colors. So one drop of Pale Flash mixed with one drop of Brown Sand. I use this color on his face, hands and feet. When I'm painting his face, I make sure to paint the surrounding areas, the inside of the hood also, to make sure later on I won't have any grey spots left. For the robe, I use the colors Off-White from Vallejo with Airoco from Skill 75. I'll mix in just a little bit of Airoco into the Off-White until I have the color I liked. The color is a bit similar to the color Bone White, but then a bit lighter. To mix my own colors, I have more control of how soft brown I want the robe to look. For the wolf, which is on Carl's back, I use the colors brown gray with petroleum gray from scale 75. I'll mix these colors with a 50-50 ratio. When painting the wolf, make sure that the paint will go into all the little nooks and cracks of his fur. To paint with a thin layer of paint will help with that. For his beard and eyebrows, I will use the color Petroleum Grey. For some details on the robe, I will use the colors German Black Brown and Off-White from Vallejo, but also Airoco from Scale 75. I'll first paint the belt on his waist in the color German Black Brown. For the robes, I use the color Airoco, and for the scroll, I use the color Off-White. Now I will first start with the inner cape. I will use the colors in order Boss Chestnut, Beastie Brown, 
and blackered brown from scale 75 and Phileo. First I'll paint two thin layers of the color Boss Chestnut. This will be my darkest color on the inner cape. I will leave the recesses with this color. I will make the color of the inner cape in a somewhat lighter brown color. The outer cape will have a much darker brown color. For the next step, I will use a 50-50 mix of Boss Chestnut and Beastie Brown. I'll paint pretty big areas with this color, just not in the deeper recesses. To get a smooth transition from the darker to light color, I'll paint with thin layers of paint in all these steps. I'll paint about 3 layers of this color. After that I will use only the color Beastie Brown. I will go over pretty much most of the areas I did with the previous step. I want the cape to have a lighter color than the color I have so far on the miniature. I painted 2-3 to three layers of a very thin paint on the miniature. Some areas I found also needed a third layer just to make a lighter and brighter brown color. Here I started to paint with a 50-50 mix of Beastie Brown with Blackguard Brown. I will start to paint smaller areas. I will focus on the raised parts and to paint a bit around it. This will start to give the cape a nice glow of a bright brown color. I'll paint an extra layer on just the raised areas. As the last step on the inner cape, I use the color Blackguard Brown. I just focus on the areas where most of the light will fall. I need to watch out to not make the areas I paint too big. Less is more in the last highlight step. But to still give the cape a nice glow with this color, I use three layers of paint. When I finished the cape, I decided to paint the shoes in the color Boss Chestnut. I did wait to paint the shoes until I was done with the cape, to see which tone of brown I would like. For the outer cape, I will use the colors Chocolate Brown with Beige Brown from Vallejo. I will start by painting one thin layer in the color Chocolate Brown. This cape is going to be much darker and I wanted to kind of keep in this color. For the next step I will use one drop of Chocolate Brown with about a quarter of drop of Beige Brown. This will still be a darker color, but just a little bit lighter than the previous step. I will leave the recesses with the darker color and focus on the upper areas and the areas where some light will fall. I am slowly building to a lighter color. It might not seem that there is any difference between this and the previous color, but after three layers, if you take a closer look, you can see a subtle difference. After that, I will use a mix of one drop of chocolate brown with half a drop of beige brown. I'll focus on the upper part to slowly build up to the last highlight. Again, I will keep the cape in the darker color and just have the most raised parts in a soft lighter brown color. Now for the last highlight, I will use beige brown, only applying it to the most upper areas. I will paint an extra layer of this color if I want the part of the cape to stand out more. I will do that on the side of his back. If you make a mistake or just want to tone down the highlight a bit, you can use a very thin layer of the paint of the previous step. If you water down that paint, it will still show the highlight but much softer. For the bow and the leather on his sword, I use the colors English Uniform with Beastie Brown. I'll mix these colors with one drop of English Uniform and half a drop of Beastie Brown. I also decided to use this color on the small detail 
on the dagger on his belt. For the holder of the dagger, I will use the color petroleum gray. For the cross on his neck and the sword hilt, I will use the color polished gold. For all the metal parts, I use the color chainmail silver. I'll paint the sword, sword pommel, dagger, scroll, buckles, arrowheads and the details on the bow with this color. After that, I will use the color bone white on the arrows, necklace and the detail of, on the paw of the wolf. Now let's shade the miniature. I start by applying Reichland Flesh Shade to the skin. After that I will use straight nun oil on the wolf, his beard and the metal parts. I finish with a 50-50 mix of water with Agrax Earth Shade. I will apply this to his robe, bow and the leather of his sword. I will use a thin layer of the shade to show the details of the robe, but I will not highlight it. I like this softer shade which makes it a bit messy but still shows the details in the recesses. I will use the color brown grey on the wolf. I will dry brush the fur of the wolf with a light coat of paint. Dry brushing works really well on fur of animals. I am dry brushing sideways of how the fur is. Try not to dry brush in all directions like up and down. Try to find two angles to dry brush like down and sideways. For the eyes of the wolf I use the color bone white. I will highlight the skin with a 50-50 mix of pale flesh with brown sand. I'll paint the upper parts of the face and skin. For the teeth I use the color off-white and I paint two dots of black in the eye sockets to indicate the pupils of the eyes. I will use a thin layer of polished gold on the sword hilt and cross on his neck. I will use chainmail silver on all the metal parts. I will use the color silver on the upper side of the sword, the metal facing up from the bow and on the arrowheads to make them all shiny. For the base I will first use the color star brown with Mojave white from scale 75. I will use a 50-50 mix of these colors to paint the whole base. After that I will use the color brown gray from scale 75 to paint the patterns of the stones on the base. I will paint 5 stones with the colors Haiki Yellow from scale 75 and Off-White from Vallejo. I finish off the base to paint the side of the base in the color Arbuckle Brown from scale 75. The miniature is all done now. After letting the miniature dry for at least 24 hours, I will apply quick shade in the color Strong Tone from the Army Painter on the base. Just the base, not the whole miniature. After letting the quick shade dry for at least 48 hours, I use the Anti Shine Matte Varnish from the Army Painter. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or anything, you can always leave them in the comments below. I was really looking forward to now finally having all the heroes of Zombieside painted. Now I can move on to Massive Darkness. I hope you're ready.